Welcome to the third and last mini lesson of my brief overview on organic chemistry. In this unit I will be discussing what a functional group is and then we'll have some fun with some well-known organic molecules. Functional group. Well, the definition is an atom or group of atoms that replaces a hydrogen in an organic compound. Generally hydrocarbons are found combined with other molecules. When discussing a molecule in organic chemistry you're discussing more than just a chain of hydrocarbons. Non-hydrocarbon molecules have been grouped according to how they react. These are called functional groups. This is by no means a complete list of functional groups found in organic chemistry. This is a simple overview, so let's take one specific functional group and examine it in greater detail. The hydroxyl group is also known as the alcohol functional group. It is a common group and not just among 21 year old and up crowd. These squares show different ways to represent what happens when a hydrogen atom is replaced with a hydroxyl functional group. The R is shorthand for any of the many single bonded hydrocarbon chains such as methane or propane. As you can clearly see there are many ways to draw hydroxyl molecules. Recall from the last lesson that this last method it does not show carbons and hydrogens but uses lines as shorthand for carbon to carbon bond. In other words don't forget this means that it's going from carbon to carbon. Though right here it was replaced and it's replaced with an OH. And what's off of here? You remember? hydrogen because a carbon has four bonds here's one here's two so the ones not shown must be to hydrogen by this method it must be to hydrogen so one two three four so the same thing here you see hydrogen drawing is good for simple compounds but for more com complete and complex compounds naming rules so let's talk a bit about naming we are going to stick to the fairly simple naming rules for functional groups. This is an overview. It's not to give you everything you need to know about organic chemistry. Recall that when you have a linear chain, the name depends on whether or not there are any double or single bonds present. The ending changes from A and E to E and E if double bonds are found in the longest chain. For functional groups, a hydrogen is swapped out for the functional group. When this happens, you also need to adjust the suffix from the A and E to denote the functional group that is doing the replacement. In this example, the A and E replaced by anol. So ethane to ethanol. Advanced naming. We are not going to go into the details for advanced naming rules. I'm just going to give you a brief heads up on what you might see in a biochemistry course. The naming convention used includes branching where single chains are joined in the middle. So here's an example of an unbranched chain. You can see where pentane is. You have a carbon, 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 carbon. When you have branching, you need to know when whereabouts it occurred. So there's a numbering scheme that you apply and you say uh, it might be three that that branches from, four that one branches from. There is a convention used, again we're not going to go into that, I just want you to know, be aware that it's there. So part of the advanced naming convention is assigning numbers to the branches to specify exactly where a new chain is being attached. Remember on the previous unit the example of house addresses used in the last unit? Again the number can be thought of as a house number so you have the correct place to which to give the publisher's clearinghouse prize to. You wouldn't want to deliver the check to the wrong place now would you? or receive it for that matter. And rings. Rings add a nice complexity to it, um, but again it's too complicated for a brief survey of organic chemistry here. I just want you to know that the naming convention does take into account rings and you do change the name depending on where the ring is and what it's for. Now that we've talked about the naming and the drawing and all the detail I wanted to get into, let's have a little bit of fun. Let's see if you can recognize these organic molecules. They are much more complex than what we've seen, but are very common. While these molecules have all names in keeping with the rules that we've mentioned, they also have common names that I'm going to show you here, and these common names have been around longer than their, quote, official names. In other words, to use an example in real life, 
You can use Her Royal Highness Princess William Arthur Philip Lewis, Duchess of Cambridge, or Kate. Which one are you going to use? So what do you think this one might be? Wake up. It's a clue. If you need to, pause to think about it a little bit. Otherwise, I'm going to continue. So pause if you need to now. Caffeine. Yes, that's what caffeine looks like. Sweet. Well, what do you think sweet? Glucose. If you guess glucose, you got it. Olympics. Don't want too much of this. Testosterone. Energy. Especially for those biology students. ATP. So let's review the terms. A few terms that you should now have a working knowledge of. Hydrocarbons. That's those molecules that only contain carbon and hydrogen. Organic means living things. A study of the chemistry of carbon compounds involved in life. Organic molecules, those molecules that have carbon atoms linked in a straight line or in a circular ring. So let's see how much you remember from all three units. Assessment time. Is organic chemistry the chemistry of metallic compounds, the chemistry of substances produced by living organisms, the chemistry of compounds that contain carbon and hydrogen, or all of the above? Go ahead and pick one. Pause if you need more time. It is the chemistry of compounds that contain carbon and hydrogen. Number two, the simplest alkane is ethane, ethene, methene, methane. Pause for a minute if you need it. It is methane. See those students working on that gas? Number three, a compound that contains only carbon and hydrogens with single bonds is called... Which one do you think it is? There it is, number A, alkane. Number four, alcohols contain what functional group? I'll just let you look at these. Which one? C. If you are interested in further information, here are some sites that I found to be great, excellent ones. Pause to copy them down if you wish. And one final thought on chemistry. I got this from Vision Learning by Atkins, 1987. Please go ahead and read that and pause. I hope that you have enjoyed this mini lesson and that it helps you follow along with the chemical formulas in your non-chemistry tests.